And this is where it starts to get very interesting. Some of the scholars, they said if you look through the history of the Torah, that most of it, or I'm sorry, that there is in it most of what was divinely revealed, but the tahrif, the alteration of the Torah, came through the additions in terms of the, the bulks of it. What does that mean? وَيْلٌ لِلَّذِينَ يَكْتُبُونَ الْكِتَابَ بِأَيْدِيهِمْ ثُمَّ يَقُولُونَ هَذَا مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ Woe to those who write the book with their hands. And they, then they say, this is from Allah. So Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah says, when you think of the sections of the Torah that were added, especially when it comes to the stories of the prophets and things that contradict some of, the, you know, what we would see as fundamental to the law, fundamental to the legislation, fundamental to the character of the prophets, he describes this in a very interesting way that they elevated the words, think of like the tafsir of the Torah, right? They elevated some of the writings over time that were politically driven, that had agendas and things that contradicted, and they put them into the divine book. And so it broadened the Torah. And so the divine words, many of them are still there. And that's why, subhanAllah, you'll find that there are a lot of similarities. If you read the Old Testament and you read from our law, you'll find a lot of similarities, right? And so there's a lot of original scripture there. And that, you know, some of the proofs that uh, he uses is when the Prophet ﷺ saw, when the Torah was presented to the Prophet ﷺ, or when it was brought to him, as the, the Jews in Medina were governed by the laws of the Torah, the Prophet ﷺ was reclining on a pillow, and the Prophet ﷺ took the pillow behind his back and he put it under the Torah. So those scholars, they say that that would either just be a sign of respect or the Prophet ﷺ honoring what may remain of divine revelation because certainly there is something in there that is still that what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed. So it's the bulk of man-made writing that was added to it over time. Also, the many, many, many translations and mistranslations and little changes here. One word changes here. One word changes here. And so what Ibn Hazm rahimahullah mentions is that a thousand changed words or something to the essence of a thousand changed words, right? Completely alters the meaning. Let me put it to you this way. If someone was to document or transcribe a conversation between two people or tell you about something that happened between two people and they don't like you or they have something to push, then somewhere in there, there are going to be some words that are true, sentences that are indeed true, but there will be changes and things that could completely change and alter the character. So, habbatun, hitlatun, Allah Azza mentions some of these examples. One word here, one word there. And then that's one form of tahrif. That's one form of changing it as well. And so what do you end up with? Obviously, as Muslims, you look at it and you can see so much in terms of proofs of the prophethood of the Prophet Wasallam. So many things that there are similarities between the texts, and we say, okay, that's, that's something, something to build upon in terms of our da'wah, right? But then, you've got Benjamin Netanyahu calling you the Amaliq, right, the Amalekites, and, and, you know, the chief rabbi of Israel and these defense ministers saying genocidal craziness and using that directly to exterminate your brothers and sisters in Gaza relegating them to less than human beings and animals. You say, what is that? And I've, I've caught Muslims multiple times, which is why this is so important. I've caught Muslims multiple times ascribing to the prophets what we would never ascribe to the Anbiya. Right? We would never ascribe to Dawood and Nuh something, some of the things that are written. They're to be then used to the destruction of populations. And so there are additions, certainly from our perspective, there are the, the, the changes. And how do we come to terms with this as Muslims? We have to believe that indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed these books and that these are the greatest of the scriptures prior to the Qur'an. But Allah Azza wa calls the Qur'an what? Musaddiqan lima bayna yadayhi. It confirms and Allah also calls the Qur'an muhaymin, filters, governs. So it filters out the, the, the laws, the ideas. And indeed there are changes in legislation, but it is the ultimate filter of everything that came before it. Lastly, dear brothers and sisters, and as I said, it's too hard to give an extensive breakdown of the Torah and what it was and, and what it means for us today. Obviously, it's important for us to acknowledge and to believe. As the Prophet ﷺ, by the way, he even taught the Muslims in Medina that when you know, the Jewish communities in Medina would read the Hebrew to obviously 
Arabs, right? The Prophet ﷺ would say, just say, We believe in what was revealed to you and what was revealed to us. Why? Because whatever truth is there, we believe in it already. But the Qur'an is sufficient in terms of a sharia, in terms of a way of life, in terms of that ultimate filter, that ultimate legislation, that ultimate revelation. But lastly, a moment of appreciation that you look to why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it such a miracle that the Qur'an is preserved to every single word, every single letter that can be recited in all of its qira'at and the qira'at are documented and preserved and the interpretation of the Qur'an is preserved through the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. Because if you lose the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, which is the authoritative interpretation of the Qur'an, how it was lived, what it meant, if you lose that, then you open it up to all sorts of possibilities to then twist, turn in this direction, this direction. And of course, we could never foresee in our lifetimes that someone would dare to take something out of the Qur'an or add one sentence into the Qur'an. But dear brothers and sisters, look at what's transpiring around you, subhanAllah, in terms of the speed of fitan in this day and age, the speed of trial and tribulation. Allah Azawajal has promised that the Qur'an will be preserved. But the attempts... The attempts will remain. And beware of the attempts. And beware of the sub-attempts, which are, of course, then the elevating of, you know, the, the writing of man, right? To where it would become like Qur'an itself or the removal of the authoritative interpretation of the Qur'an, which is the Prophet ﷺ himself. So we say we believe in Allah, we believe in what was revealed to us, and we believe in what was revealed before us. And we believe in the prophets and we believe in the messengers. And this is similar to نَحْنُ أَوْلَى بِمُوسَى minkum. This is our closeness. We honor what was initially in those revelations. We honor those prophets. And we honor them by abiding by the Qur'an and avoiding the mistakes of earlier communities to make sure that we treat our scripture, that we treat what was given to us with the utmost respect and love and honor and that we abide by it by following in the example of the Prophet ﷺ and maintaining its recitation. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us people of the Qur'an, people of the covenant, people of the Ahad, who honor what was given to us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala join us with all of the Prophets and our beloved Prophet ﷺ. Allahumma ameen. Jazakum Allah khair. Wassalamu alaikum wa